Please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Supreme Republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the April 2, 2024 meeting of the Patchogue Village Zoning Board of Appeals. First application will be a new application, that of 2403, Fernandino and Son Development Court, LLC, 214, 210, 200, 1928, and 188 West Main Street, 14, 21, and 25 Hammond Street, and 26 West Air. Seeks permission to construct the two apartment buildings with a total of 262 residential units. 49 studio, 141 one bedroom, 72 two, bed two bedrooms. 540 square feet of office space and 301 square feet of retail space requiring leave for 435 31A. 618 parking space is required, 410 provided. 435 21B, max height of 45 feet, and three stories required, height of 49 feet, four inches, and four stories of building one, and height of 46 feet and four stories for building two, provided 435, 21D, 10 foot minimum front yard setback, required, and a 6.5 foot front yard setback for building one, provided 435, 33B, minimum, nine by 20 foot parking space is required, and nine by 18 provided. 435-33B, minimum nine by 20 parking space is required and 11 by 19 angle parking space is provided. 435-33B, minimum 24 foot backup space between parking space is required and 16 foot provided for angle parking space is subject located in the D2 business zone. Is the applicant or a representative thereof here? Yes, Mr. Chambers. Oh, here's the phone. Good evening, Councillor. How are you this evening, Mr. Chairman? Oh, thank you, sir. That's good. Good evening, members of the board. For the record, my name is Eric Russo. I'm with the law firm of Van Brunches. We have from Russo. And I'm here this evening on behalf of the applicant to discuss this particular application um, that has had several hearings to date between the Village of Pacho, the Suffolk County Planning Commission, the Suffolk County Department of Parks, Recreation, um, as to, and their Board of Trustees as to Parkland. So this evening, I would like to first off, thank you for the opportunity to come before you and discuss our application and the variance relief as filed by our office on February 12th of this year on behalf of Ferrandino and Son Development Group, LLC of 71 Caroline Boulevard in Farmingdale. The project that's before you tonight is a result of a vision on behalf of the applicant, uh, Ferrandino and Son Development Group, LLC, to make an investment in the future of the village of Patchell. The proposed project will reshape the west end of the village, as we uh, have discussed before the Pacho Village Planning Board, making its recommendation to the Board of Trustees, and then doing same, as I indicated, with the county agencies and boards. And then again, just last week, with the Pacho Village Planning Board, where they now reviewed their site plan and application, closed the hearing, subject to a hearing before your board. Our project has been granted a change of zone by the trustees on 4.08 acres, consisting of nine tax lots on West Main Street, approximately 221.9 feet west of um, West Avenue, as well as parcels that are on Hammond and West Avenue, known as 188, 192 to 198, 200, 210, and 214 West Main Street, as well as 1421 and 25 Hammond Street and 26 West Avenue. The project and the reason I'm giving you this as history is because I need you to understand and want you, you have not had the benefit of, unless you've read the advance in little snippets or Newsday in little snippets, uh, or perhaps patch a review from Mr. Bogak about the project. So I want to provide for the record the history and our consultants are going to 
outline to you what is being proposed, and then we'll move on to the variance application itself and the merits and the issues. Okay. The board, as I indicated, approved the change of zone on February 12, 2024. The project is in the Patchogue Medford School District and the Patchogue Fire District. Uh, there are all parcels now are D2 business, so there are nine tax parcels involved. We also was able to secure relief of the covenants and restricted use for the cancellation of that on 201 West Main as it related to a public garage with bodywork and vehicle painting, as well as an automotive painting business. As I indicated, the trustees also, as part of their change of zone, approved itself as the lead agency and issued a neg deck pursuant to CEQA on January 8th, 2024. The Planning Commission, as I indicated, recommended approval of the project with uh, certain conditions, which the uh, Board of Trustees approved in a supermajority because they didn't agree with some of the conditions that they outlined on February 7th of 2024. And then on February 22nd, the Seven County Department of Parks, Recreation and Conservation Board reviewed the project and that day issued a resolution of support and approval recommending a license agreement with the app for the applicant for 10 years with two five-year options for renewal of the park and the improvements and maintenance as it is and relates to the land adjacent to the Pacho River right there on the Main Street waterfront where they have four tenths of an acre. The application was reviewed as I indicated by the planning board last week. And after in-depth discussion and review of all the various issues, the hearing was closed, and then they referred us to your board this evening for the variance relief. This evening with me is Andrew Nee, who is the project engineer from BHB and Hopoc, to review the site plan just so that you get an overview of what we're seeking to do. Chris Boone, who is the project <clears throat> architect from Lassard Design in Vienna, Virginia, to explain the architectural elements. We also have with us a PDF that is Gallo and I think our, um, one of our staff will help show it on the screen for the public if you're on, uh, I think, channel 18 or whichever channel you're on, and so that the public can see it as well. Chuck Hamilton from AM Weber Associates in Setauket will review the New York State DEC and environmental issues so you understand how we are working with the DEC. And then John Hamilton from Lance, our landscape architect from LaGuardia Design and Watermill will discuss the improvements to the Pacho River portion that's situated on the property. Our project is consistent of two proposed four-story residential apartment buildings of 262 units to be known as the Carriage House. The proposed Western building will be the Carriage House West and will have 154 units. And it's the petitioner's intent to refurbish, relocate, and seamlessly integrate the trolley house, which you can see from Main Street, presently located on the property, and it's the last remaining historic structure in Pacho Village. It was across from the lace mill, and you'll see in the binders there's a, a I want to say, a, a marker on the lace mill side, and it is our applicant's intention to put a similar kind of marker on the building that's going to be relocated and refurbished in part of the building that's being proposed in the Carriage House West. The Carriage House West will also have a grab and go of 301 square feet in terms of retail space with 540 square feet of community office space and a central courtyard with a pool. It is proposed that the repurposed and preserved trolley house will be used as community office space and we have proposed and discussed a potential lease with the Pacho Village Chamber of Commerce if they are interested at a very nominal rent of a dollar a year. The proposed Eastern building, Carriage House East, will have 108 units and feature an outdoor courtyard. And there will be two on-site parking garages under each respective building, along with surface parking area at the Carriage House West and surface parking located on West Avenue and Hammond Street. Part of the property on West Avenue and Hammond Street have already been discussed, hopefully, if the village is interested to make it village property, village parking at some point in the future, but we haven't reached that juncture in the project. The project site is further improved with landscaping, drainage, and buffers, and there are presently six buildings on the proposed acreage, which consist of an automotive mechanic, 
auto body shop, mixed use office, and laundromat. These buildings will be closed and built and demolished. There is a comprehensive restoration plan for the 1.6 Suffolk County owned parkland to connect to the proposed Patch Village River Walk with a walking trail native plantings and perhaps kayak launches. The residential units in the Carriage House West and East will consist of studio apartments as well as one and two bedroom units with approximately 20% allocated as affordable and workforce housing to address diverse community housing needs. It is our intent that the project will create a high quality multifamily residential apartment complex strategically located near attractions within a quarter of a mile as well of the Long Island Railroad, which makes it transit oriented and aligning with Patro Village established patterns of development that are, and its uh, essential amenities. The economic benefits will provide job creation, construction opportunities, and increased property values and taxes. And the surrounding area that you're well aware of is a mixture of commercial, industrial, residential, public services, community services, waste facilities, and recreational open land use space. Should all the necessary approvals be granted, which we're in the process of seeking to secure, inclusive of your board and the village planning board, if you recognize and grant the area variance relief for site plan and architectural building design, our project intent is to complete with the health department and the DEC and also our financing so that we can construct the project within three years. The Carriage House West will be constructed in phase one and completed in two years. The phase two is proposed construction of the East will commence after 12 months into phase one and hopefully be completed also within the same two year period. We have provided and brought various boards this evening, which are facing the public for the project design and layout, as well as to provide, as I indicated, the video, which we can run and show the carriage house and the river wall. Once you have a better understanding, uh, and if you have any questions, we will answer them, and our um, consultants will assist us in presenting those. Um, we will go into the details of 7-712B, for the variance relief that we're seeking, as you stated in the call of the meeting, with our real estate uh, appraisal, Michael Lynch, Patrick Lenahan, our traffic engineer from VHB, and David Wharton, our senior environmental manager from VHB. I have provided various binders here. There are 69 photos that I literally walked from one end of the village to the other yesterday to take photos. So that you can see them and remember them if you don't by driving through because I found in discussions with the chairman of the planning board, Mr. Rocco, that there was a berm in front of the EMT um, establishment on the West End. And no matter how many times I drove past it, I never saw it. So I figured it would be best to show you what we're talking about this evening and therefore provide you with the information. So unless you have questions, I would like to uh, begin. And we have also included decisions from prior zoning board hearings here in the village before your board from April 20, 2011 and 12-1-2010 as to parking space variance relief that you've granted similar variance relief in those applications to projects here in the village that is, are being requested here this evening. So unless you have questions about the project, I'd like to show you the video and then commence with our consultants. Proceed. Robert Scudero, our assistant from Ferrandino and Nord Development. This same video was also shared with the planning board and the board of trustees and the public. What you're seeing is it's focusing and taking you through, that's the parkland area that we are working with the county and the DEC and what, as well as our consultants to refurbish. And if you look in the binders, you will see some photographs of the Patchogue River as it exists today. 
which has lots of tires. So that's between the two buildings? That's between the two buildings that's being proposed. And it will be explained to you during the presentation. And those are the buildings and we have the materials here just in case anybody wants to see, but it's truly brick. It is not brick facade that's being proposed. And that right there, if you go back, that's the carriage house, which there's a photo of it in the binder that's being uh, proposed to be lifted and relocated um, because it was pointed out that it was something of a historic nature that the village would like to preserve. And the building design was modified to incorporate it in the building itself. And the plaque that's on the front in the portion is to emulate what the building was about for the carriages that went north and south on North and South Ocean Avenue and East and West on Main Street from decades ago. That's the building that's to have the grab and go and the uh, community space. And with that, I'd like to begin with Mr. Uh, Andrew Nee from BHP, who can describe to you and will describe to you the site plan, Mr. Nee. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, Zoning Board. My name is Andrew Nee from BHP Engineering, uh, with offices located at 100 Motor Parkway in Hop Park. Uh, BHP has been retained by the applicant to provide civil engineering services for the application consisting of the proposed multifamily residential buildings known as Carriage House East and Carriage House West. Following our original hearing with the planning board, the application was presented to the Village Board of Trustees for consideration of a change of zone to uh, the entirely D2 business district, which as you're aware has been granted. Uh, two buildings comp are comprised of a total of 262 residential units. Uh, each building being located on the east and west banks of the Patchogue River, directly south of the brewery. Access, vehicular access to the site will be from West Main Street. Carriage House West has a driveway within an existing access easement located on the western uh, edge of the property, which will be shared by the existing commercial use at the rear of the property. So the access, vehicular access will be located here on the western edge, and they'd be able to enter the garage there. Uh, access... Um, uh, that easement exists today and would remain for the benefit of the commercial use behind us. Um, and access to the building, as I mentioned, will be located right behind the commercial uh, office space available in the relocated trolley house. Um, the carriage house, uh, oops, sorry, lost my place. Ooh. Carriage house east has a driveway located on West Main Street, located here. And that would be access to the single story of parking located on the ground level of the carriage house east. A total of 420 parking spaces are provided and uh, comprised of 373 located in structured parking beneath the two buildings and 47 surface spaces. The surface spaces are located on adjacent to that access easement and also in the L-shaped parcel, which is south of Hammond Street, which also fronts on West Avenue. And that's the lot, Mr. Russo defined that is potentially going to be dedicated. Um, alongside with the applicant, we have been working with the village engineer to allow the project to connect the village sewers. It's our understanding that the village is in the planning stages of upgrades to the wastewater treatment plant. And at this moment, there are no concerns with the proposed flows from our project. Uh, additionally, the district has provided us some schematic information related to the relocation of the sanitary infrastructure around our site, and we're working closely with the village for the proposed tie-ins. We're working on a meeting with them later this week, potentially, for that projected tie-in. In addition, we have paid a fee of $15,000 to the village so that they can review our proposed project and also talk about any system with the upgrade of their sewer system. So that's what Mr. Nee is referring to, and it's in the works because Chris Weiss from H2M, on behalf of the um, village is your village consultant, and Mr. Norberg, your 
highway superintendent, who's also an engineer, has been directing and sort of coordinating the effort to address the sewage system. There are, because there are three access points, which I think Andrew can point out, that there are, eas there are easements for sewer and utilities underneath the respective properties, and the sewer lines are going to be re relocated or removed, and the utilities will remain, and they'll just become vacant easements there under the properties. Correct. Underneath the uh, western building, there's a gravity sewer line that actually crosses the river uh, at a stream crossing, and underneath uh, Carriage House East, there's existing forest main that are there. So the villages provide us the schematic routing of how they would route those facilities around the property to allow us to construct the two buildings. Right. More of a planning issue than ours. But right. what you right. did say in your site <laughs> is that most of your parking is going to be underneath the building. Correct. At grade, not under grade. grade. But yeah. At grade. But it's not, it's not all surface, that is to say. When you pull up to the building, you won't see all the cars all around it. Correct. Now, As you saw the under... video, it's well screened from the street. Only access would be those two locations, driveway access here and here for garage access. And this is a two-story parking garage with residential above. And this is a one-story parking garage with right. residential above. So with respect to the access, how do you see the traffic flow from the surrounding area coming into the buildings and, and, and departing? We will get to that point. Yeah. This is the engineer who designed the site plan. Yeah. 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 So you, you brought it up, so. <laughs> it's not no, I brought the big guns. And, <laughs> and we have the uh, traffic consultant who's going to assist us with the variance, but who will also explain and answer your question. Yeah. 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 So, sorry, I just planned to have you on site. That's Let's just stay with the site. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Anything else out there on the site? No. Right there. If there's any questions, I'll no. turn back to Mr. Russo. Thank you. Thank you. Then that being said, I would like to introduce to you our architect, Chris Boone, and he will explain to you the design that he has been diligently working on for several months with materials. Not that you're going to get into them. Well, again, this is more planning than Absolutely. Else. But the benefit is we didn't want you to get into the merits of the variance of the belief without understanding the nature of the project and the scope of the project and the depth to which the applicant is trying to redesign and reshape the west end of the village. Good evening. Uh, Chris Boone with Lasar Design out of uh, Virginia. So I'm going to kind of talk through the, the presentation. And if you just don't start, just leave it right there um, in the beginning. So the, the buildings are designed um, to be equal frontages on both sides. And really the, the natural feature that we're restoring is meant to be the focus. So uh, the design of the buildings, you can see we're, we're kind of turning inwards. So that park is really supposed to be kind of the center of space in our mind. Um, go ahead and start the video. Uh, you can see in terms of the aesthetics, uh, we, we focus on a lot of brick. We feel that the brick gives us a very um, solid feel and texture um, for this type of structure. Uh, this is full body brick. Um, we do have different uh, colors for the tans and the whites that we are exploring. Um, but if you just pause for a second so I can talk about some of the details. Um, but we really focus on the, the small details within the brick itself. You know, making sure we have correct corbeling, we address the heads, we introduce precast elements. So all the materials are very solid, um, you know, warm materials for the project. Um, we have um, balconies on almost all of our units. Again, this is about the river, facing the river, um, being outside. Um, the engagement across the street front here, go ahead and hit play again. Um, we've actually created volume space in there. So we have, um, you know, 14 to 20 foot space in which we'll house um, a small, at least on the west side, a small little pop-up restaurant space. It's about 300 square feet. Um, and at the end, we're going to have a little over 500 square feet for an office space. Um, behind the ground floor, you can see here. So this is the trolley house. Now, the trolley house is just the lower building. We are relocating that. That is actually in the middle of the site currently. Um, our plan is to actually move the building and then build up and around it to protect it. So you can see how we've maintained the ridge line of the roof. Um, the roof would typically go all the way back through, but we are bisecting it there. And then the, the top of the concrete podium is becoming the lid on top of this structure. 
Um, we do expect, because of the condition of the building, that there will have to be some shoring, um, some other like supports and walls that will have to happen behind the exterior to some degree. Um, and we'll evaluate that as we put it together. But we are maintaining the openings, um, a lot of the details, the headers, uh, the white banding elements we are keeping. The opening of the garages we are keeping as well and using it for our own entry to the garage on the side. And that's also causing the variance for front yard setback because the setback is supposed to be 10 feet. And in this particular case, that's what's causing and encroaching out to give us the relief in the variance pull for 6.6 .6 feet and 10 feet is required because they want to make sure that people recognize that that was the historic structure, which is why there's a plaque on the building being proposed, which is similar to the plaque that's across the street in front of the brewery that speaks to the lace mill and the history of the lace mill. Before you start, Mr. Mr. Chairman, just to clarify what you just said, the only place where you actually need that front yard variance is where the trolley house is. Correct. Thank you. Otherwise, the rest of the setback matches the code requirements. And it was a suggestion that we heard through village officials to make it more prominent. Okay, thank you. Uh, you can see there, we are going to have a plaque there that, that acknowledges the history, give a little story here. And you know this is going to be leased back to the, uh, the village. Um, the, you can see in this, this elevation right here, we have two sets of, of brick colors. Uh, we did bring the litany of some of the ones that we are exploring. We have a, a like a rose and then more of a beige uh, that we're alternating back and forth. Uh, we are looking also at through body brick, you know, since it's a little bit different on where it's cast and how you treat it um, as well, too. And sort of looking at other synthetics and stuff for the inside courtyard, which I brought as well. Um, the balconies and material are all going to be a high quality metal, and the frames within the windows themselves are all going to be um, a, a dark color. Um, there are different mullions and mutton arrangements um, to give uh, diversity and, and arrangement within the facades as well. Um, go ahead and continue. So, as you come across here, into uh, the first building or the, the eastern building, pause for a second. On the left hand side, the lower side is where the leasing center would be, and that's where both buildings will be served. Um, but in terms of leasing, uh, both buildings also have a elevated podium where we have a rooftop, uh, not really a rooftop terrace, but a plaza terrace at, at around the second level um, where we do have amenities and things of that nature. Uh, like uh, grills, uh, anticipated some pool elements, things like that. Um, as it relates to safe sustainability, outside of doing all this cleanup on site, um, the, the building itself will be lead silver minimum. So regional materials, uh, appropriate ventilation, efficient mechanical systems. But beyond um, those, we're also going to be planning to do a 40 kilowatt solar system on top of the roof. Um, and this is meant to serve the amenities um, and the common areas of the building. Um, so that it'll be dedicated. We're not gonna be putting it back into the building, but we will be willing the cost basis for the residents by having a self-sustaining amenity program. Um, and we're also doing a, um, what you would call a blue roof. Um, and now that is a, a waterproof me a membrane on top of the roof that actually collects rainwater. We take it down to a storage tank in the garage. Um, I believe it's, a, it's like 10,000 gallons. And then we, we use it for irrigation throughout the year so that we can mitigate any water for, that we may need to help maintain uh, the park elements. Um, and so there, as part of the, uh, the building, the, in terms of residential heights and units, we are varying three to four stories above the parking garage, depending where you are. I will show sections, um, I think, later in the presentation and, and walk through the complexities of how the parking is solved as well as providing the screening with the units so that we can't see the cars that are elevated and um, uh, dealing with the overall height of the building. Um, so with that, in terms of uh, the aesthetics and the sustainability, um, does anybody have any uh, architectural questions that I could answer? Okay, thank you. So our next consultant that has been working with us is Chuck Hamilton from AM Weber Associates. 
Mr. Hamilton's experience through the New York State DEC offices where he used to be employed for many years is working with us to try and address the DEC issues as they relate to the river and the issues that we are experiencing in reclaiming and getting a DEC approval for this project. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, I was asked to come on to this project to look at the Patchogue River and see what can be done with the river. Uh, we, we met with the DEC uh, staff and the Freshwater Wetlands and Fish and Wildlife and said, what are your concerns here? He said, could you make that river better? He said, you're doing right, I can. So we looked at this product. This is a, it's a, it's a linear wetland system. It only has little edges of, uh, of, the, of the stream bank, has some freshwater wetlands area, but it's a regulated freshwater wetland, meaning they also regulate what happens to the stream plus 100 feet landward. The stream itself is also a protected stream. It's called uh, sea waters, which means it's a warm water uh, fishery. So our goal when we looked at this project was to say, how can we make it better? The water quality, as you know, comes down a very large watershed, a large area. There's a lot of road runoff and things like that. So we're not gonna be able to help the water quality to a certain degree, but what we can do is treat the stream bed and the banks and, 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 the, and, the, and the plants. When you look at the, the linear wetland system, there's a very narrow edge about three feet on both sides of freshwater wetland plants. Right next to it, it's infested with all kinds of invasive plant species, shrubs, trees, multiple rows, just a bunch of stuff that you'll find in an urban and you know, suburban uh, environment. So when we looked at this product, we said, you know what, we're going to rip everything out. And the next thing you start looking at is, is where is all the runoff from this, this land go from? Come to go, go. It, well, it's all compacted uh, urban soil and it all goes right to the river. And you can see many spots about that. When you go down the river, you'll see a 180 foot chain link fence in the middle of the river. Uh, the one facility has what we would like to call tires, but it's really considered solid waste. There's a lot of solid waste uh, adj adjacent to this str uh, stream. So when we looked at this, we said, we're gonna have to get rid of the solid waste and really handle this facility. So our design is to rehab the stream. There's a bunch of bulkheads. As you first come just south of uh, Monto uh, Main Street there, you'll see some bulkheads on the, on, the e on the west and east side. The east, uh, the west side, we're gonna have to keep because the, the water comes so fast, you can't really do anything. But once we get past that, we're gonna start ripping out bulkheads and restoring the shoreline with some rocks, put some little coves and things like that, and, and start doing some planting in the water, do some coral log treatments, and actually plant some uh, all native plant species, wetland species, upland species. They'll need little to any maintenance and are of value to uh, a lot of wildlife. And we're going to do some berry plants and things like that. We, and our landscape architect will be able to talk a little bit about the plant and something like that. But pretty, pretty much rehab the whole shoreline on both sides. We're going to grab the runoff. But, these are these are massive buildings. There's going to be a lot of runoff coming from here, but it's already been going there. What we're going to do is treat the water. The water will come down to a subsurface uh, a system that's below grade, but beneath the buildings. It's going to have the capability of capturing a one in five year storm. And then when it discharges from that five year storm, you have two rain gardens, one on the north and one on the south, that's going to flow into that. It will capture some more of the runoff and then we'll go to the river. So we're really going to have a much better capability in controlling all the runoff. Uh, from this this facility and this property that's been gone going on for so many 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 years, we're not going to do any dredging the stream. The stream will stay the same. I know there's some concern about some of the sediments and potential contaminants from prior you know industrialization of this of this of this river, but we're not going to do any of that. We're just going to be really altering, removing structures and putting back natural stone, natural wetland plants, natural coral logs, and, and restore a natural creek. The other component that we're going to do with this facility what, uh, is called the river walk, an opportunity for people to come and visit the river. Because uh, when you look at this particular river system, this whole wetland system, there's very little public access. This would be one of the first pro uh, public access on uh, this particular uh, wetland and river system. The, uh, it's going to start on the west side come along the property outside the wetland area and then go across the river and then uh, go down uh, to the south uh, on the east side of the channel. Uh, the one thing we're all gonna have is two, two piers on, up on the north uh, west corner. We're gonna have a, a, a over, overlooking uh, pier. We'd like to have that as a wildlife or historical aspect of uh, explanation of what's been going on in the Paschal River. And our, our southern pier would be more like fisheries and, and uh, and, uh, and water related type of a, uh, educational program. And then you'll, you'll, you'll go over the, uh, the river on a, on a bridge. It'll be a minimum of six feet high. So you can transfer us with kayaks and things like that in the future. Uh, but it's just, a, it's, it's the first time in my career of many, many years that I have an opportunity to restore uh, back to natural system and an urbanized uh, stream and, uh, and uh, stream bank and wetland area. So it's, a, it's been a great opportunity for me. So. And what the village has been looking forward to and trying to establish is what they've called Perpetual Riverwalk. 
and they've been trying to create that further down, and they really needed to have a place where it could start from. Because if you go to this location and you look in the binder of photographs I've given you, you see on the north side of Main Street that the brewery has the river right there alongside the building. But on the south side, you can barely identify this because the entire establishment that is on one side and when you look at, go there and examine it in person, you'll see tires and shopping carts and other miscellaneous items that are there in the water. Um, the village tried years ago to acquire this from the county. The county was not willing to do it. So the mayor and the village board have maintained or tried to cut the grass, as you can see in the photographs, on an area of it. So this will become part of the parkland area that our applicant would be maintaining as part of the license and the options to renew for the 20 year period. And we plan on allowing the public to go through this area, but it will be closed off after dusk and before dawn. So it will be secure because the issues in the past had to do with the fact that there were some burglaries and other um, non pleasant experiences taking place. So. And the only other thing, we're going to be removing several down trees that are in the river that are really stopping the flow and things like that. And we will we'll be removing some of those wetland identifiers such as shopping carts and tires in the future also. Mm -hmm. Thank, thanks very much. So our last consultant is John Hamilton, who will describe to you the reclamation portion and what's being proposed. And that in substance sort of describes the overall project. And then we'll go through the various really finishes. Yes, sir. Thank you, Eric. Good evening, uh, everyone. Thank you for your time tonight. Uh, here's a, a bit of an enlargement of the landscape plan, the site plan for the project. My name is John Hamilton, Landscape Park Exact, the Boarding Design Group. Uh, we're based out of Watermill, New York. Um, I think I'll start the presentation with a few existing images of the site. I'm not going to rehash too much what everyone else is already presenting here, but the story really begins with the existing conditions of this project site. So as you can see on the left, um, you know, there's a large steel fabrication yard there, a couple auto body shops, um, industrial uses. Most of the site is not vegetated. So it's either paved asphalt, uh, RCA, and the contouring on site currently sends all of this runoff towards the stream. So it's not being treated, it's picking up surface contaminants and it's ending up in this river system. Uh, if you jump a few slides here, Robert to the uh, little photos. Uh, these are the existing conditions of the stream. Um, this is the Pashog River. This is the namesake river of the village, and it's in dire shape environmentally. Uh, it's, a, it's really hurting. Um, there's concrete debris in the river, garbage, tires, as Chuck said. There's a fence uh, running in the middle of the stream itself. The flag web on line that delineates, you know, where freshwater plants and habitat uh, are currently located is actually on the auto body building itself. I mean, it's so tied to this river, it's really incredible uh, that it's even in this current state. Um, I think we'll keep moving though, Robert, maybe go to the proposed images. Um, so the site plan here, just to give you a quick overview, here's West Main Street to the north, Hammond Street to the south. The perimeter of the project, we are proposing, uh, you know, the, more than two dozen street trees. So these buildings will be scaled down with large sizable canopies uh, of dense foliage, high branch trees that you can move under safely on the sidewalk. But we really want to ground the buildings and provide scale immediately uh, when the project is built. Hammond Street also is quite dilapidated in its current state. So uh, a new streetscape is proposed on, on Hammond. And then the, the really unique thing before we get to the stream itself is that there's a small uh, lot kind of right at the center of our project that's owned by Suffolk County Parks, uh, as Mr. Russo described. And that, in these images here, as you can see, is slated to be a public park and entry plaza into the Western building. So this will always have open access. It's gonna be very inviting to bring residents and, and uh, users of the streetscape into the site to see the river, to experience the park. Um, and it also doubles as the entrance into this building. Um, it'll probably be used for recreational activities like uh, yoga or amenities for the residents, um, things of that nature. And the idea is to continue, uh, you know, the native plant palette, the really loose organic feel up into this public park 
uh, and it's meant to be low maintenance and in keeping with everything else in the stream corridor. So we can keep rolling through there. Uh, the stream, if you go back one, uh, will have a boardwalk down kind of the central corridor of it. It's going to be six feet wide per the recommendations of the DEC, enough for two people to move comfortably side by side. The bottom image is a, a really good example of the look here. It's going to be at grade, or not at grade, but close to ground level, floating above the, the native plantings uh, so people can get down and actually see the river and, and experience what uh, this great feature can be to the village. Um, the rest of the corridor between the buildings here, I mean, this is just to give you scale, I mean, it's probably between 60 and 100 feet wide between the buildings. That entire uh, area is going to be planted with native trees, shrubs, grasses, and perennials. It's not meant to be maintained. Uh, within two years, it will not be irrigated. Uh, and it's just going to be a self-sustaining, basically a meadow, a floodplain meadow uh, that's adjacent to the stream. Keep rolling here, Robert. Uh, more, you know, concept images of how the plant things will turn out here. Very loose native habitat for uh, animals and wildlife and, and marine um, inhabitants of the stream. Some rain gardens will be introduced into the, the northern portion here to help filter water and contaminants um, before anything reaches the stream itself. Uh, we can keep rolling. But still providing public access to get down and experience um, all of this great work that's proposed to go along with the project. And potentially at the southern end here, um, you know, at the north end, we have that great entry plaza and park, but even at the south end, to create that spark at the end of Hammond Street, potentially another public space uh, where the boardwalk would end, but people could also reach the waterfront of the stream. But you can also notice in the photograph. The sewage treatment plant in the uh, lower corner there. Any questions or anything about the landscape? Thank you. Thank you. If there's no questions as to that, then what I would like to do is move into the variance portion of the application as it relates to a relief that we are seeking. And to that end, we want to As this board is aware, based on the call of the meeting, we are looking for three variances under the, uh, as a result of the Patchogue Village Zoning Program. The variances that we are seeking relate to 7-12B of the uh, New York State Village Law. And it's our obligation to at least try and present as to the area variances for you to show whether there's an undesirable change produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to DMI properties being created whether the benefit could be sought by some other method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the area variances we're seeking, whether the requested variance is substantial in nature, and whether the proposed variance will have an adverse impact or effect on the physical or environmental alleged difficulty as it's self-created um, or in the neighborhood and district. And the last is if this was self-created, with the consideration being given relevant to the decision of the board, but still pre not preclude the granting of the variance. I'll tackle the last one first. The self-created issue, it's proposed. We haven't done it. We're not here looking for forgiveness. We're asking you to look at our application and look at the merits of the application and the proposal that we're setting before the village in a totality uh, setting to approve and develop this particular site to improve the village. In our instance, in our position is that we are proposing something that will be a benefit for future generations and clean up a situation that has been here. So it's not self-created and the relief that we're seeking and that we're requesting will be the minimum necessary and allow the application to go forward. As far as undesirable change in the neighborhood, I'm gonna ask our real estate expert Michael Lynch, who has appeared before you before, and I've also provided you with his document binder. Each of you has one that he prepared, explaining the relief that he's seeking with his credentials. Um, and I'd ask him to come forward and he would touch base on 
character of the neighborhood, talk about feasible alternatives, and talk about the substantiality of the variance. And then and we'll then move on from there to the other issues as they relate to the CEQA determination and also as to the park. Mr. Mr. Russo. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Good members of the board. My name is Michael Lynch. I'm a state certified real estate appraiser with offices at 15 Dewey Street, Huntington, New York. Um, I have appeared a few times over the years here, uh, as well as before the planning board. Um, and I have a copy of my, my CV uh, in the appendix uh, of my report. So I was out at the site um, back on March 21st. Um, I took a number of photographs of the subject property as well as the surrounding area. Um, I walked the area up and down uh, West Main Street uh, on Hammond Street and West Avenue. And um, in my agenda, you can see the various photos that I took. So I don't want to be too redundant in my in my presentation here, but. Um, the parcel, the, the overall property is comprised of rough, uh, of 13 tax parcels um, along the south side of, of West Main Street, just west of West Avenue. And, and um, as you head east on, so this essentially will be the uh, the gateway to to the downtown section uh, along Main Street proper in Patcho. This is a transit oriented. A project known as the Carriage House. Uh, it's a 262 apartment project. Um, as the architects and the other experts explain, um, very attractive design, four story design with all natural um, exterior materials. Um, the, the, the existing county park at its center will be essentially the focal point of the project, and that will be restored as the environmental experts. Uh, describe that park as well as as the upper reaches of the of the Patchogue River. Um, just to go over the, the the immediate area. So again, it's, it was originally 13 tax parcels back in um, in February. There was a change of zone application for the the westerly most uh, uh, parcels, which were industrial E. Um, those prod that. The, the westerly portion of this property actually abuts uh, a former super sun, Superfund site, which was the former Patchogue Gas Company. Um, that site was recently remediated by, by New York State. Um, to the south, abutting to the southwest is a metal fabrication um, company. Um, they actually have a, a, a an easement that runs along the westerly boundary of the property as you go south from, from West Main Street. Um, the overall property was comprised, again, of 13 parcels, which consist of two automotive-related um, buildings, um, a two two-story uh, commercial office uh, retail structures on West Main Street at its easterly end. Um, on the south side, on the north side of Hammond Street, you can see in my photographs, there's uh, strewn um, motor vehicles, boats, and other debris. So it's it's not, certainly in its present state, it's not um, something that would be considered an attractive uh, landscape for the area. Um, opposite the property to the south is the Patchogue um, sewage plant. And to the north of the property, of course, is, are the elevated um, buildings, which include the Blue Point Brewery um, directly to the north and then to the northwest is the Patchogue uh, Family YMCA. Both of those structures are very tall and again they're sitting up at a higher elevation so from a scale uh, point of view um, the, the anticipated uh, and design height of these two four-story structures will not appear out of scale and I'll also talk about other uh, buildings uh, within the immediate areas well within a half mile radius of this property where we have anywhere from three to five story structures uh, within the village. So the variances we're seeking, again, we uh, technically need building height variances. Um, we're proposing for building one of 49.25 height 
for building one and for building two, a 46 foot height, where a limit of 45 feet is allowed under the T D2 zone. We're also seeking um, an extra story of height at four stories for both. However, um, and we went over this with Mr. Russo earlier, there is a section of the code, uh, section 435-21I2, where the code under the D2 allows for an additional height uh, should the project contain uh, at least one level of, of integrated parking. And that is the case certainly with both of these buildings where we will have uh, integrated garage space um, within both buildings. So um, on its face, we technically need a variance, but again, under that section of the code, um, that does allow for the extra height um, so it should um, therefore uh, comply under the code. Um, Mr. Lynch, there's also other properties, correct, that you I've identified in your proposal yeah. that shows the five-story structure, so yes. you could just point them out to them? Yes. Um, in, um, in my report, if we turn to pages... Um, 24, Route 26, um, we have other buildings. Again, uh, this is not something that's gonna be out of character with the immediate section of, of Atchard as well as within a half mile radius um, of the village. So we, we of course have the new village, um, which is in a DRD zone. However, again, it's it's just to the, to the east of us, of course, on the north side of Main Street. And that, uh, that project consists of four and five story uh, buildings, uh, of mixed use buildings with apartments over retail, over restaurant, over offices. Um, and that's on page 24, photos 21 and 22. Um, just to the east of that, uh, at 131 East Main, we have under photo 23, we have the Village Walk at Patchogue, which is an assisted living. Uh, facility um, that's comprised that's on the north side of East Main um, that's comprised of a three and a five story um, assist again assisted living facility building um, that's within a half mile radius of the subject property um, photos 24 and 25 are of older five story uh, apartment buildings um, photo 24 is of the Tiffany apartment building. Uh, that's at 1 Maple Avenue at the corner of East Main Street. That was built in 1972. It's within a D2 business zone. Similarly, um, we have the Terry apartment buildings at photo 25. That's a five-story apartment building. That's at 28 Ryder Avenue at the corner of Terry Street. Again, five stories, and that's within a D2 business zone. Those are two of the older examples, but again, they're within the D2 business zone and they're five stories in, in height. Um, and the last photo um, we have, at least in my, in my report, there are other examples. However, I thought these were the most glaring. Um, we have photo 26. That's the relatively recent uh, mixed use art space building that was constructed approximately 10 years ago at 20 Terry Street. Um, and that building consists of, it's a mixed use of a three and five story structure, also within the D2 business zone. I also wanted to point out just to our south, um, getting back to the immediate area on West Avenue, we have the Riverwalk. Um, similar um, circumstances with respect to former uh, industrial property that was redeveloped. Um, that's approximately 10 years ago that those condominiums were put in. Um, and like this project, uh, there was a restoration of the river uh, frontage um, to, along the westerly banks of the uh, uh, westerly portion of that project. And again, there is, um, if you look at the, the advertisement for the river walk, uh, one of the big focal point again is the walkability of the site, the walkability to uh, the uh, Patchogue train station. And again, these are things that being transit oriented development, uh, not only do we have the river walk as an attraction, but of course it's it's quarter mile 
uh, proximity to the uh, to the Patchogue train station. Mr. Um, Lynch, it's also, your, uh, if I understood you correctly, earlier when you were discussing the variance relief for the 6.6 .6 feet from 10 feet to the setback. Yes. In your opinion, as to that, whether it being substantial. It's yes. So with respect to the um, to the variances and whether they're substantial. Um, as we talked about earlier, that small three and a half foot variance uh, requested for that small bump out so that we can accommodate the uh, the historic uh, trolley house portion is, is insignificant. It's certainly not a substantial request. Um, also, the um, and Mr. Lenahan will get into this, the parking stalls. Uh, we're looking for nine by 18 parking stalls. We're nine by 20 for the surface parking. Uh, are required. Again, the, the river walk immediately to the south of us 10 years ago, that was granted variance for 9 by 18. And the new village project was also granted variances for uh, the 9 by 18. So again, that's not a substantial request. And in terms of the angled configuration of the spaces, that's that's not a situation also that's unusual within the village. It's the, the uh, uh, the Chase Bank building on East Main Street has a large uh, angled parking lot. The, uh, the, there's uh, on-street parking in front of the uh, art space uh, building where angled parking exists. And the uh, Patchogue train station also has some angled parking. So um, just to sum up. Um, Mr. There, Lynch, I have one other question sure. in terms of feasibility. Are there any proposed feasible alternatives for the applicant to pursue? Given the design and the land and the location, no. Given the constraints of the minimum required uh, uh, requested variances to accommodate the needs of um, of the applicant to carry out this project. Are there any physical issues that you would say would cause a, a concern, or that would in order to the benefit of granting the variance? Yeah, and, and as the environmental uh, experts spoke to, we're actually improving the environmental conditions in the immediate area by restoring uh, the pocket park as well as the uh, the river itself. So certainly from an environmental standpoint, um, it's, a, it's a huge plus. So um, in terms of property values, I think it's, it's pretty self-evident um, given existing conditions that are presently there. This is gonna be the gateway as you come from the west into downtown uh, Patchogue on Main Street. And again, the, the, the scale of, of the buildings is not something that's out of character, not, not only in the immediate section of West Main Street with the brewery and the YMCA structures, but also other uh, three, four, and five story buildings that uh, I've outlined in my report and I've discussed in my testimony. So, so is it your opinion then that based on the application before the board, the variance relief being sought is the minimum necessary to assist and develop this application at a certain time, preserve and protect the character of the neighborhood? Yes, absolutely. If there are no questions, any questions from members of the board? Mr. Lynch, I'd like to move on to Mr. Wardman, who will just dispatch a touch on the environmental concern under the various relief of 7 7 12 Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Russo. Um, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is David Portman. I'm the Senior Environmental Manager for BHV Engineering with offices at 100 Motor Parkway. Uh, BHV was retained by the applicant to prepare the full Part 1 Environmental Assessment form that was submitted as part of the application to the village. And I've just been asked to speak uh, really briefly about the project tonight, specifically regarding the environmental impacts associated with the requested relief and their relevance to the variance criteria that you'll consider tonight. Um, you've already heard a lot tonight from the other members of the project team as to um, some of the environmental benefits of the project, some of the features that have been incorporated into the project to minimize environmental impacts, such as the improvements to the stormwater runoff um, and the stormwater management system, um, especially as compared to the uh, existing condition where runoff is allowed to 
uh, move uncontrolled over the surface into the river from the various uh, commercial and industrial uses that occupy the site, and that would be removed as part of the project. You also heard about the other improvements that will benefit the Pasture River, including the removal of the various debris and fencing, um, solid waste and invasive species, and the planting of native uh, wetland and upland species throughout the proposed green spaces, um, which is, of course, a significant benefit to the environmental uh, aspects. Shortly, um, my colleague, Mr. Lenihan, will speak to the proposed parking and its design, and will confirm, as he has in his uh, written report that's before the board, um, that this requested relief would not result in adverse parking impacts. Um, and you also heard from the project architect who described some of the key features of the building design, such as the variation in the materials, fenestration um, that provide visual interest and break up the massing of the structure. And all of these speak to um, the ways in which the design of the project minimizes potential um, visual impacts and reduces um, the perception of the proposed building and its height and mass. Um, Mr. Boone also discussed the project's lead silver uh, design goals and the ways in which um, the uh, environmental footprint of the project has been minimized through some of those features. Um, I'd just like to note for the board's attention, and Mr. Russo already alluded to this once, um, that this board has a little bit of an advantage when it comes to assessing the environmental impact um, here because the Village's Board of Trustees has already completed a review of the proposed action pursuant to the State Environmental excuse me, Quality Review, review Act, or CICRA, as we call it, um, based on a review of the applicant's Part 1 uh, full environmental assessment form, the project plans, and other materials that were before the board. The Board of Trustees established itself as the lead agency for the environmental review following a coordination with involved agencies. They carefully reviewed the potential impacts of the whole action, including the requested relief that's before you all tonight. Parts two and three of the full EIF were prepared on behalf of the Board of Trustees to assess the importance and magnitude of the different environmental impacts um, that could result from the project. And ultimately, the Board of Trustees adopted a negative declaration um, detailing the reasons for its determination uh, that the project would, in fact, not have the potential for a significant adverse environmental impact. Uh, as Mr. Russo pointed out, that negative declaration was adopted on uh, January 8th of this year. So it's your testimony as far as the environmental concerns that this board would have to consider, they're negligible given the project scope and the project design and the review by the Board of Trustees so that this board doesn't have to undertake a negative or do any environmental. That is correct. Thank you. Do you have any questions? No, oh, yes. Very well. Thank you all. And that being said, as I indicated, the variance relief that we were seeking had to speak to the height, which we've tried to address and clarify for you, and also the setback, the environmental issue, substantiality, the feasibility, but we have a parking issue. And Mr. Lenihan from BHV, our traffic consultant, will discuss that parking concern as it relates to in the call of the meeting, things that, that relate to the number of parking spaces, the code and requirement for the parking spaces, and also the size of the parking spaces and the circulation of the parking spaces. And with that, we Mr. Lenihan. Thank you, Eric. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Zoning Board, Council and staff. My name is Patrick Lenahan. I am the Director of Transportation at DHB's uh, Long Island office in Hop Hog at 100 Motor Parkway. Um, we've heard from a couple of BHBers today uh, about the environmental and the site plan, uh, another task that we were charged with uh, in support of this project was twofold. Uh, the evaluation of any traffic impacts associated with the project and a hard look at, at the parking. Uh, and we are before you today principally um, for three points of relief from parking code. Uh, but just a brief summary of the traffic impact study, uh, because should the board find it appropriate to uh, 
uh, approve the relief and the um, project is permitted to move forward. Uh, I just want to assure the board where we are in terms of traffic as well. Uh, so briefly, um, the traffic study was performed in consultation with village officials in terms of when this study was done, what locations were looked at. Um, we took no credit in terms of the traffic generation for the existing uses on the site that will be demolished um, or the potential traffic generation of the vacancies on the site that could uh, generate traffic. So in that regard, our study and the results of our study are very conservative. And our study finds that should the project go forward, uh, what we see is very small increases in delays at the intersections we studied, incremental increases, as you would expect, nothing significant. Uh, there was one location, Waverly at West Main, the southbound left turn during a few hours that seemed to have quite a bit of delay. So one of the recommendations of the report uh, is to do a simple timing modification to uh, reduce that delay. And we will be um, talking to Suffolk County, Department of Public Works about that. Uh, as, as I'm sure you probably know, Suffolk County's jurisdiction um, to County Road 85 is from the river to the west. And then the village takes over. So so was that the northbound left turn off of west onto the main street going westbound? Southbound left turn from Waverly as you come down from Sunrise. That's you go through the first traffic circle and go roundabout, and you come down to West Main towards River. You're looking at the yes. Walgreens. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Exactly. You're looking at Walgreens. Gotcha. And All you right. want to make the left turn to head that, you know, downtown. Yep. Uh, there are certain there are certain hours of the day where you look at that movement and say that could use a little time. I would I would think that that most of the traffic that was looking to go downtown would be. Following the, 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 the north side of the brewery to come out on west rather than trying to make a left at Waverly, unless they were maybe going to your facility. Well, that that condition exists now. Right. We make it incre we incrementally increase that delay, uh, but with the with the fix that we've identified, we make that condition better than anything, it is today. Anything you can do to make that whole intersection better than <laughs> <laughs> It's it's a matter of it's a matter of the apportionment of the green time and who gets served how much when is what it comes down to and the county probably hasn't looked at it in some time and traffic volumes change and things get out of whack. Um, so uh, the gentleman had a question about the site's access. Um, Wanna can we get the site plan? It'll come up there. Well, this is kind of uh, more graphical than engineering. There it is. Okay. Um, so, as Andrew Need described, there are there are two points of access for two buildings. Um, the Westerly Building, which I believe is called Building Number One, uh, gains access from the easement that runs along the west side of the building. Uh, you can see the entry portal on this drawing. Uh, building number two to the east gets access uh, into the parking area through an entry portal directly from West Main Street. Uh, the recommendation in the report is for each of those locations to be served with a right turn in and right turn out eliminating, uh, most importantly, left turns out um, as a safety condition. Um, the village has hired a consultant that has reviewed the study and has some questions about the study. Um, the planning board uh, gave us permission to speak with them directly. I've spoken with them. We're working through the comments, and we're going to meet with Suffolk County Department of Public Works as well. Um, but... Any changes that happen to come out of that, I think, are minor and really don't have, I don't think, the potential to change the site. So so there's like no plans to put any lights up on Main Street there to no. help people get in. And you don't all have left turn lanes even on Correct. westbound. One of, one of the things we were sensitive to 
you bring up the left turn lane issue is uh, the, the village folks that we've talked to don't want to lose a single parking space. And if I were to carve out left turn lanes on West Main Street, we're going to lose parking on one side of the other. Right. So mm -hmm. somebody coming northbound on West Avenue, would they turn in at south of the whole building and go around to the right? Is that how they'd get in? There, There's there's no vehicular uh, access to the parking garages from Hammond. There is a loading space. So folks who were coming up from the south have two options uh, to go all the way around the horn, so to speak, and wind up in that left turn that I'm going to fix, mm -hmm. that we're going to fix, or cut across on division and come up river west of the site. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I have a question in, in regards to to, uh, to traffic as well. So it's expected to have uh, families and children in these apartments. Uh, they uh, the traffic going to is and the, the location is going to be uh, less than a mile from the schools, uh, from Bay Avenue actually, and uh, and and the, and the middle school. So uh, kids that uh, that will be part of the of the school district would be walkers, or their parents will have to drive into the school. So there's going to be a lot of traffic also going east on Main Street. Um, Is it going to Bay or going to River? Yeah. River? River? Yeah. Yeah. River? Still. And uh, and Tyler, the yes. middle school as well, man. Yeah. I'm only the, I'm only the yeah. traffic engineer, but you know, having done a whole lot of these hearings and hung out with attorneys and project applicants and other experts, um, multifamily housing doesn't. I'm I'm a little out of my area, so. Doesn't generate a whole yeah. hell of a lot of school children okay. in the first place. When we had our hearing before the planning board last week, the discussion was that there were a total of three school students in the new village oh. complex. Mm -hmm. So there was a concern. One of the residents who did come forward expressed that concern, and the chairman, Mr. Rocco, pointed that out, as well as Ms. Gilio. They discussed the whole issue of how many actual students were in there. It seems that most of the units in this type of a facility as already experienced in New Village is for people who are 55 and older or people who are single and they're just looking for this as a temporary uh, place to reside before they acquire a home in the village. One of the planning board members pointed out, I was three years in an apartment till I purchased a home. So. That was a concern that was expressed by some of the residents, and that was the answer that was provided, not by the applicant, but by the village planning board. And of course, this traffic pattern was already discussed with the planning board. Correct. Yes. Right. So realistically, gentlemen, what this board is concerned about is the number of spaces in the relief park. I, right. I just wanted to touch on it briefly um, so the board could have confidence that should they grant relief sought. No. You know, when you read your code, right, it says, make sure you don't cause an issue with this, this, and that. And this traffic is one of them. <laughs> and one of the other points that Mr. Lenahan has touched on is the number of parking spaces in the variance, which is cited in the call. And I have had a discussion with village officials and your village attorney and discussed that your code perhaps needs to be modified or tweaked because the counts that are being required for a studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, and just your parking, you may perhaps be unrealistic based on what people do when they start to reside in the apartment building. Someone who has a two bedroom unit may be using one of the bedrooms as an office space or a guest bedroom. So necessarily the total number of spaces required for a two bedroom unit and someone residing in there may not be, or should, may be modified under the code. And that's another gap here between what Pat is pointing out in terms of the total number of spaces by code and the number we're providing. And he can further elaborate on what we're providing based on the units. Please. Okay, so uh, that was just a quick summary of the traffic study and, and, and how that worked out. Uh, but the, the, the crux of the meeting this evening and why we're before this board uh, we are looking for three points of relief in terms of the village parking code. Uh, one of them is the number of stalls, which Eric is alluding to. Um, the, the site plan does not show the number of, of parking stalls uh, required to meet the code explicitly. 
um, but provide some 420 stalls, uh, some of which uh, I think there's another number, 410. 410 was um, what was in the call of the meeting, which exactly. is when the village wrote the notice. Not they sure just counted four tandem parking spaces in one building and six tandem spaces in the other. So we're asking for relief from 410 based on the identification of tandem spaces in the two buildings totaling 10. And Mr. Uh, Bianco can elaborate on that. Because we typically really don't count the tandem spaces because they're not typically accessible or necessarily to be accessible to tandem spaces. So that's why it's 410. It's 410. Correct. Exactly. So um, if, even if we go with the number 410, uh, my analysis shows that we're that we're finding that those tandem spaces are never used in a tandem fashion. Okay. Um, so um, while code relief is required, our parking demand analysis, which again is detailed in my study, which was uh, submitted to the village, indicates that given the size of the development and the number of units, um, our peak parking demand will be approximately 344 parking stalls. As we and as we noted, we provide by the villages count uh, 410, and that's based on Institute of Transportation Engineers data collected at numerous multifamily sites um, in suburban areas. What it doesn't account for, and it's conservative, it doesn't account for the site uh, being in a thriving downtown where people walk, and it doesn't account for the fact that the site's within a half mile. Of a train station. So um, I would expect that the actual parking demand would be somewhat lower because with those two conditions, there will be some folks who move in that may decide that maybe they don't need a second car because of the convenience that the railroad station and the downtown with the shopping and the dining. Um, and we see that play out um, in other villages when we do counts at other places. When you say other places here on Long Island? Yes, I've done multiple counts of sites that are have been operating for years, for instance, in uh, Port Jefferson, near the train station. And while the ITE data that I cite in my report um, talks about, I think, 1.31 space per unit, what, what I found in Port Jeff on Texaco Avenue, there's a couple hundred units there. Um, maybe a little closer to the train station. Um, and residential parking demand hits its peak in the middle of the night because folks are home from work. And it's a little bit higher during the week than on the weekend. So people are crazy and don't come home. Um, but what I see in Port Jeff, the numbers I saw are just under one. Per unit. Just under one? Just under one. And we're talking somewhere around 2.33 here. Um, I... Analyzed in my study, 1.33, we're providing about 1.6. Right, but I'm saying, what's the code requirement? Oh. I think we're at 2.33. You're telling me just you're, the you're, one. You're two just for the, just for the one bedroom gotcha. units and you go up from there. Okay. So uh, as Eric alluded to, um, I code amendment might be necessary. I think I share his opinion. Again, but there's only board of appeals. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. No. That's <laughs> not my place to ask I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll uh, be discussing that again further with the planning board. Yeah, yeah, the board, village board. I'm sure the village officials, but uh, what's before us is what's before us. Absolutely. And saying. that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. because but it is interesting that there are other municipalities, whether it be here on Long Island or around the country, are not adopting such, let's say, uh, a stringent uh, in multifamily anyway. Multi and interestingly enough, in the new village structure, the parking counts that were provided for new village were a, first of all, our parking here is not pay extra for it as opposed to new village where you have a supplement required to park. And B, they also have parking, but nothing like the counts that were here because they talked about it by allowing it for other areas that the village had parking. So they don't even adhere to the same count. Granted, it's a different zoning district, but if you're trying to look at throughout the village, all of the parking, the Tiffany, the Terry Street, the new village, there has to be some sort of acknowledgement for what's being proposed because in this location, you have parking across the street with the district court 
you have the proposed visitor parking that we're proposing on Hammond through to West. And with that, and not even taking into account any street parking on Main Street, we believe from Mr. Um, Linehan's testimony that we have substantial parking here. It's not a ridiculous relief that we're seeking. So, yeah. Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, Mr. Linehan, the uh, and again, just looking at this application, seeing that the vast majority of the bedrooms are either studios or one bedroom as compared to two bedroom, uh, I'm inclined to, to trust your analysis of the similarity or comparison to Fort Jefferson. Uh, where that was the case, where it was less than one vehicle per unit, was that mixed use or strictly residential? Strictly residential. So then can you speak to, since this is mixed use, you don't only have the residential, need for or demand for those parking spots. You'll have workers as well as clients, customers, uh, whoever are coming and going to the businesses on the first floor. Has right. that been part of the study? Let, let me clarify that. The business yeah, on the floor. first floor yeah, it's pretty is pretty it's pretty 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 for a grabbing gun. Yeah. So yeah. you're on your way out the door to catch the tree to get a cup of coffee in a day. Right. So that's the 500 square feet or 540 is for the Chamber of Commerce to be able to come to the location if they elect to go on the lease. And so um, what you're telling me that is there's not a de minimus. Oh, thank you. Very very nice nice ball. Ball. We've got we've got 47 I think the Chamber has schools. one executive director and he may be in the room. I've never met him. I have a great guy. I take the photos of the mayor. I've seen him. <laughs> then the other question that may I ask, there is 262 residential units. But the number of bedrooms are going to be 49, 141 plus the 72. The 72. number that's in the application. Okay. Yes. So that's like, I, I think it's three. three 200, it's 262 units. Yeah, but how many beds? How many beds is what I want to. The, the number of units, the bedrooms. Two and 144. Uh, so 344? Yeah. Right? We got a 344? 334. 334. Okay, so we're saying it's 334 bedrooms. And you're proposing 410 uh, parking spaces. Parking spaces. Correct. Correct. And not including the other 10 for the 10. All right. And then if you guys go by units, 262, and you're saying from your study it could be as low as one. But a reasonable figure would be probably what one five five. I, I think we'll be a little six, above two. one because we're a little further away from the. You know, there's a there's a line that we draw at a half a mile, and we say within a half mile yeah. it's transit oriented development. But it's really depends how close you. Mm -hmm. And this Port Jeff, the Port, you know, perfect honesty, the Port Jeff units were a little bit closer. Exactly. Right. But the, the, what, the point I'm bringing this is it's, this is something for this board. To at least understand, right. but unfortunately, the way our code reads right now, that's the only thing that's important. Right. So you understand. understand. But so, but, but for the purpose of our discussion, uh, we should know that maybe you know the other areas of Long well, Island, other areas of the country, are recognized in a development of this nature. Maybe you don't have to break the two mark. Correct. What I'm saying. The MP. The one, would, would your study say that? Yeah, the 130, the 1.31 or 1.33 that's baked into my study, I fully anticipate this coming in below that, someplace closer to one. This project? This project, less than 1.3. Interesting. The three okay. projects that he's referencing in Port Jefferson, um, I seem to remember being the attorney for all three projects and the calculation was similar. <laughs> and it worked. And it worked. Yes. Right. They're on. Two, one is under construction presently, and the other two are presently occupied with weightless. One is directly across the street from the railroad station, which is the Brock. Uh, now I'm going to forget. Hill, Hill, Hill side. Hill, yes, it's on and the Texas, one the down region. in the village, which is the was the carpet place, is now Brockwood. And one North Country is where the old lobster house is. On North Country and I, I also have I've also looked at things in the village of Farmingdale and even Rockville Center, and they've come in significantly. They've come in in practical. Mm -hmm. yeah. Forget about what they call it. Practical. Practical. Ms. Lamarton. I just want to clarify for the record. I think we we touched on it a little bit. Um, but the parking that's currently on Main Street that's going to remain. Correct. And that is not included in any of the calculations Correct. that we are providing. So there's 373 spots within the footprint, which is 
88% of what you guys are proposing, the 15 spots on the west building, on the west side of the west building, Correct. and then the off-site parking, 32 mm -hmm. spaces. Um, are there designated spaces for residents, or is this uh, uh, everybody park where, what they find kind of the, deal? You want to talk about the operations? I'm going to just confirm one thing. Okay. To my knowledge, the 25 parking spaces that are on Hammond and West are supposedly for visitor. Okay. And but there's no restriction being proposed at the present time okay. under the building. I also can attest to the fact that there is no fee to be paid for apartment owners to have their parking there, unlike a new village. Okay. But let me confirm. Will be signing for the new city, right? Okay. Sign Thank you. Thank you. Just thank you. Uh, this covered the uh, question. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Is the one. Okay. Thank you. Um, so that's one variance. The the, the second one uh, involves the size of the parking stalls, and it was mentioned by uh, Mr. Nee and and. Um, Mr. Lynch as well, uh, where village code requires nine foot by 20 foot, nine foot width, 20 foot length parking stalls. Uh, the plan provides for nine foot by 18 foot parking stalls. Uh, this relief, if granted, will not result in any adverse conditions. Uh, nine, point, nine by 18 stalls are permitted by code in a number of Long Island municipalities, um, have be, been permitted by variance uh, in this village. Uh, New Village and Riverwalk were mentioned. Um, also, in this instance, uh, this is a residential project, and so the, the, the nature of the parking space is turning over. They turn over slowly, not quickly. So the size of the stall is less of a problem, uh, but 9 by 18 is not a problem. You also have two variance decisions in your binder from 2010 and 2011, where this board has granted the same relief. Relief, so it's become a standard here by your board, the planning board. And, and just for yeah. just just for the for the record, though, yes. uh, I looked at it. Had someone look up a couple of towns: the town of Smithtown, the town of Hempstead, the town of Oyster Bay, and various villages, all except nine by eighteen nine by eighteen parking stalls as a matter of uh, as a matter of code. Uh, last but not least, uh, the plan does include some angled parking stalls uh, in that lot. Of yeah, right. uh, the village code does not speak to angled parking stalls. Uh, the, the stalls that are shown on the plan uh, follow the layout promulgated by the town of Brookhaven. Uh, in addition, I have reviewed it against um, some design reference materials. The uh, What's called my go to is it's called dimensions of parking, which is kind of the Bible for laying out different sorts of parking. Um, I'm reading if you're no, very no, excited. No, I can no, provide no, the board no, with a copy, you might have to share it. But, um, so this design comports with that, so it will operate well. Yeah. Um, so those are my three variances in parking, and should the board see fit to grant relief. Um, and the project go forward, uh, the proposed layouts um, will not cause any problems with regard to traffic or circulation. Um, the traffic impact study is a similar um, is a similar result. And uh, with that, that is my presentation. And I thank you for your time. And if there are any further questions. So, Mr. Lenahan, it's your testimony that the proposed parking being uh, presented to this board is feasible, there's no other alternative, and that the relief that's being sought is not substantial, correct? That is correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the question for no. Mr. Chairman and members of the board, I would like to thank you for letting us present to you this application this evening. I know you need to go out to the members of the public, so I will pause at this point for anybody else that needs to speak. So thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Any member of the public who would like to speak for or against this application? Kindly, when you come up, please state your name and address for the record. Hi, 
My name is Karen Turquist. Um, I live at 176 West Avenue. And uh, I, just, I just want to make sure that the residents are being represented. That's all. Uh, it does seem like the parking and the traffic is going to be an issue. And I, I couldn't hear all of it. We didn't really need a mic system in here, but um, it sounds like the parking issue isn't being solved, it's being worked around. So that is a concern for me. Uh, my commute in and out of my home is going to be affected. Um, also, um, well, the development, and I don't know if this is the proper place to ask this question, but um, all this development on the Patchell River, I live on the river. So most of us who live on that river, we deal with sump pumps. So we have to worry about groundwater level. Has anybody looked into how all this development that's gonna be going on on this river will affect groundwater levels? Cause that will affect my home and my basement, my pool space. So that's just a question that I'd like to ask also. And again, just keep us residents in mind as always that's with the decision making. I appreciate you listening are to you, me. Are you for or against the application? Oh, I'm against. Are you against Sorry. the application? <laughs> you Thank you very the, much. You don't want to see the development. Okay. Anyone else who would like to speak for or against the application? Good evening, John Bojack. Great nice to see you. How you doing, everybody? Hi, John. Danny hanging out over there. Okay, so this is my third or fourth time listening to this uh, story. <laughs> really? Yeah, I've been to all of the, all the meetings. Um, wonderful video. Uh, and I, I'd just like to say, I am in favor of the project. I'm, I, I think it's a good project, but I'm also in favor of uh, Patchogue Village residents getting the best deal out of this arrangement. They're going to make a lot of money, but the village shouldn't be... Um, diminished as a result of the project. So that, that, that's where I start, right? So I want to start, I have, I have two reactions to tonight. One's an objective one, one is a subjective one. And the objective one is this, I'm trying to understand now. So here we have a proposal, there you have 410 spots that they've got. The engineer comes here and says, it looks like, I forget these numbers, but we really only need 344, I think that's the correct number. But the code says we need more than 600, right? So, okay. so we have a gap of about 200. 200. So when the zoning board has a gap like that, what is the authority of the zoning board? What can you do about that 200 feet? Absolutely. You grant a variance from the, from the relief. For the whole amount? Sure. Or part of the amount? Or that was but in this deal. case, John, that's 34%. It's a lot, right? It's very high. That shoots the rule. Is it the highest it's ever been requested? No. 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 We've done uh, 40 percent a few times. Four. It was the highest on target. Okay. But it was in a different zone, maybe not. Different zone, different kind of project. Different zone, yeah. different project. Yeah. Right. So it's possible. So that's so it's high, but it's within the realm of possibility. It's, it's something it. that can't be feasible, but the board really has to look hard at that. Right. In this particular case, again. Uh, there's some testimony that other areas that maybe our code is a little too stringent, but that's not for this board to determine. That's what all the boards the trustees. Right. Um, but yep. to answer your question, can it be granted by this board? Yeah, it's possible. Okay, it's possible. But that's what we got to weigh the got to weigh the equities. There was a code amendment too about ten years ago at the new village that required visitor spaces, and that was kind of a reaction because there was a fear that. New development is going to introduce all kinds of parking issues, which I'm not sure will ever happen, but that kind of boosted the number so that now the apartment complex has to include the spaces for each bedroom and then for each number of, I think, seven apartments it has to include an additional guest right. space. And that kind of boosted the number up to, I think, something that's a little bit, quite a bit above what other municipalities would require, especially this kind of Transit oriented project. Okay. But that's the law as it is for the present time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the still at the time that's what's right. before that's the score. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the law. That's what it is what it is. Right. So well, let me just look at I want to just now we're talking about the objective part of this what I want to talk about today. So the Suffolk County Planning Commission did its own study of parking needs. And they made some recommendations. And I and I, and I just want to 
There are two that I find of interest because if either one of them or both were adopted, it looks like parking demand would be, de would be reduced by substantial amounts, which I guess would help with making a decision. Yeah, let's see. Right. What happened? Yes. In the it's in the binder? Or it's in the binder? <laughs> okay. So let's start with, according to, yeah, they recommend the addition of a bus stop and shelter. Can reduce parking demand by 25%. That's, that's one. I mean, and it's a recommendation to the developer. And, you know, they go out and speak to the bus authority about doing that. I don't think that came up at the planning board meeting, and I'm raising it today because it's a possibility of reducing parking needs for people on a bus. So they don't need a car. To, to, to that point, isn't the, the other side of West Avenue going to have just that? It has a party. It has, yeah. has one. Yeah. 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 It, it may be, but I'm going to presume that their engineers, their staff people, also competent, decided despite that, that this was still a good recommendation. So, yeah, who might say that it isn't? Stay with the jack. Okay. Right, so that's what they recommended. And the other one is the, this concept of bundling, which is you make people pay for parking. So there's also, a, I think it's 10% uh, reduction in parking demand. That is actually what is done at, at, uh, at New Village, I believe they do at the pay for their parking. So these, this plan, as so from what I've heard, doesn't require it. But perhaps if they did, that would reduce the parking demand as well, which would also accommodate perhaps. And we found actually area. what happened in New Village is that people to avoid, to pay a lower rent, would, uh, would decide we're not gonna pay that fee and we'll try to find parking elsewhere. So they end up using Village Municipal lots either across the street, I think on Lake Street or another stuff, and they end up taking spaces away from residents. So there's a, okay, there's kind it, of a it goes both ways. It goes both ways. Okay. Goes both ways. Okay. Right. But nevertheless, these are, you know, these recommendations are not adopted by the, the, the board of trustees. They did not mandate the zoning board or the planning board to, to, um, to, to, to if, affect them, but they did say that they could be considered. And because they were recommended, I, I suggest that the, the zoning board take a look at those recommendations. Plus, <laughs> this is the best part. <laughs> so they also say the developer should look at the parking stall demands and reductions guidebook, which is 30 pages long. Now, these are also strategies for reducing parking needs. I don't think all of them apply, but I don't know if all of them have been reviewed. And if they haven't, perhaps they should be. Because there might be other solutions in here. I, I don't know. Mr. Lanahan, are you familiar, sir? Mr. Lanahan, are you familiar with this study? It's it's something that the Planning Commission cites uh, often yeah. in their non-binding recommendations. Uh, Can any of those apply to this project as well? Uh, potentially, uh, when I talk about transit-oriented development uh, near a train station, that... Uh, Basically infers uh, some well, some best. level of uh, public transportation like bus. What do you say? Yeah. Um, the percentage, the gentleman, did he say twenty five percent? Yeah, I think it was twenty five percent. I don't think we would ever get anywhere near there. Um, just mm -hmm. to give you an idea, um, in Nassau County, areas of Nassau County where public transportation is much more robust than it is out here in Suffolk County. Um, if you look at journey to work data from the census, 14% uh, of people residing in uh, Nassau County use some form of public transportation. Okay. And the major piece of that is a long out road. So to get to 25%, I think would be extremely difficult. But it was, but that's okay. All right. So I was and just wondering you, if you were familiar with that, that yeah. the applicant would have known this. I'm right? just trying to help out with Oh, the I don't appreciate, we appreciate the lift. You trust me. <laughs> and, and as you know, um, you don't want your parking lot full anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you want a little bit of a buff. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're full, you fail. Right? Okay. Thank you. Right. So I'm just going to welcome to my objective, but now my subjective one is this, since I'm a resident. Yes. And, and I travel, I travel Main Street in front of this area now that's undeveloped. And now I hear that there might be another entranceway down to Vision Street and up River Avenue, which is going to create nightmares for me tonight. 
because that's a really congested area. Um, but that's a planning board issue, I think, not, not a zoning board issue. But I, I guess really what I want to say is that the thing with all these traffic studies is they're all well and fine and good. But I think most people have a gut feeling that there's going to be parking issues because of the large, such, the large projects. So it's very big. You know, it's very worthwhile, very big. Um, you know, I tried to make some suggestions for reducing the parking demands. I don't know, maybe some, maybe there's something in there that's worthwhile. If not, you really do have the hard decision to make. I mean, it's kind of clear. You don't want to throw away $150 million, 300 jobs, 262 apartments, uh, when you have a chance to actually have them, if you can do it, you know? I'd leave it to you folks to figure out what you can do. That's Thank it. you, Thomas. It's a pleasure. Oh, nice to see you. Mm -hmm. Hello. Joan Lola, 30 Wiggins Avenue, Catch Up. Catch up. Um, so, right, so I was thinking about the whole thing and the traffic, and it, it, it is going to affect the traffic. But what about taking off one level, one, one floor, instead of it being five stories, make it four? That's, that kind of makes sense. Um, also, I have another concern about the river. I, you know, they're going to remove shopping carts. They're going to remove tires. But what about dredging it? Because I think there's going to be a lot of stuff under there, like, you know, old batteries and stuff. They really need to get that stuff out because up the road, that's going to be a big problem. Um, and the carriage house, uh, the trolley house. So that... I'm wondering why that was not designated a historic landmark and given that kind of, you know, precedence of being, because once they do this and it's not even going to look anything like when you go inside of it, it's not going to be something that the people of Patchogue can go to and go in and see how it used to be. Almost like a, like a museum type of thing. Which I mean, these are there's very few structures left that are, you know, anchors of Patchogue, you know. So I'm just wondering why that couldn't remain something that, you know, people can come and have access to, to see it. You know. So those are my three things. Thank you, know? you. you just stay right there a second. Uh, to the developer, Mr. Russo, why, why couldn't you take a level off the top of, of the project? Economics. Economics. Well, if you can't get financially it doesn't work. Okay. But uh, it would fix the parking. It would even it out. It would make it. All it's right. the construction and the cost of construction, the interest rates, the economy. It's, it will work. It's just, you just couldn't do it without the, the that number do it without the emissions. To address the second question, I imagine. The dredging, the we dredging. discussed this at the planning board, um, and there is no dredging that's being proposed. I can have Mr. Uh, Hamilton come back and just explain how they're handling it, yeah. but there's no dredging there if you want these. Well, Mr. Hamilton, if I'm not mistaken, sometimes you can disturb it, it's worse. Uh, yes. And yeah, exactly. Yes, there's some why don't you come forward and just. Or is it right. that you might find that it's now so polluted that it, it's almost going to be like a super it, it went to DEC for a long time. The gentleman that worked at the DEC for <laughs> seven yeah. years. So, uh, basically, any kind of uh, contaminants is, is is in the sediment. It's stuck there. It's not leaving. Once you start disturbing it, put it up in the water column, then it floats down and starts dispersing down through the waterway. So, what you want to do is really not alter or change any of that, disturb any of that. But so you have pictures of people in kayaks. And my thing is, if you got people in kayaks, and kayaks tip over. I know I go with my husband sometimes, and I'm always the one tip over, not him. Um, so if those people fall into that river, and uh, are they going to be getting sick? No, there is no, I mean, no, no. Simple answer is no, because the contaminants are there. You know, uh, the, the work, if you're going to get sick from water, it's from bacteria. It's not going to be from the contaminants. There are any contaminants. I don't even know there are any contaminants there. But if anything, it's from the bacteria. The road runoff that's coming off there, the cat poop, the dog poop, the wildlife poop, that's in the water. Those colleague bacteria. But we, we're not thinking that happening. And you, if you're out there kayaking, you're going to get exposed to it anyhow. But as far as falling in, I, I don't see that it is any issue or a health issue to any of the uh, occupants of those kayaks. Thank you. 
It's just that, I mean, how long has it been since anyone actually went through the sediment and took out like old batteries that leaching uh, battery acid and God knows what. What you're going to find out with batteries, they had value. They usually weren't dumped in rivers. It's the tires. That's the what usually, and, and they can be, everything can be removed manually. We're not going to do any excavation. We're not going to have any equipment or anything like the, the trees will be chainsawed out and lifted out and things like that. There'll be no alteration to the sediment or the banks and things like that. As but, we do this but you said, said he's going to carve little outcodes. Well, of, well, what they are, we're going to put some rocks along the shoreline and things like that and create that. We're going to pull out the bulkhead, and that's but that's all upland area. We're going to make upland area into wetlands. But the bulkhead, that's going to go down. That's what state well, that's going to be in. pulled so out. We'll lift that up. It'll be, it may be minimal, but we'll, we'll, we'll have sediment curtains around that to minimize the turbidity. Uh, when you do any kind of uh, removal like that, you'll have a turbidity curtain that will hold that sediment right inside that area. I uh, just, I mean, I would, I would get all the stuff out, but that's me, and I don't know how everybody else feels. It just well, it feels like it's half. Honestly, all I can say, if they found it out, but fella, just like Mr. Hamilton is going to show up right here, my predecessor will show up. Yeah, and yeah. he's going to give him the same grief that Mr. Hamilton would have given you. And he's been doing this a long time. And then the other know. question was with the character. So in answer to that, it's currently. A, the <laughs> trolley house, trolley which is what it was. It was where they housed the trolleys that mm -hmm. ran east and west on Main Street and north and south on South Ocean Avenue. But the present business is a steel manufacturing business. There is no trolleys in the building. The request when the discussion came up with the village officials was, it's not a historic landmark. And when I was in the meeting and we were talking about the project, before that even came up, there were four individuals, the building inspector, I mean, believe it or not, the mayor, the chairman of the planning board, Ms. Gillio, myself, and her other staff person. And I got a look and I was told, "How? what are you going to do with the trolley house? And I, having lived in Petro Village and having known the property in the area, I said, what are you talking about? And they said, well, there may be concerns by people that it's being demolished because in the original proposal, it was to be gone. And I looked at them and said, I wasn't aware. It's not a historic register. No one's told us it needs to be preserved, but if that's a concern of the village, because you wanted to at least know that the lace mill was also there and now being replaced with the Y and the brewery, I said, give us 24, 48 hours. We'll try and figure out what we can do. The applicant came back and said, we'll pick it up, we'll relocate it, we'll make it part of the architectural structure and refurbish it to its brick design and structure. So that's why you see it in the structure the way it is. But it does technically have no historic value other than that's where the trolleys were kept and functioned over 100 years ago. And you can see them in photos around the village. How, how old is it, do you know? The I, I'm going to say it's the 1800s. Yeah, I'm surprised it's not a historical landmark. Yeah, you know, uh, my knowledge, the village would be responsible for doing it, but yeah, I that's... didn't hear anybody making that. Test. I don't have the answer. To that. I think that's something that really needs to be addressed, and I think it needs to be saved. And instead of incorporating it that way, it it really should be something that. I mean, what, what are you guys going to do with it once you've built it in and now you've built up on top of it? What is going to be occupying that space? As I said in the presentation, part of its office and part of it, parking garage. Office. Or the Chamber of Commerce, if they uh, rent the space of the 500 feet. Uh -huh. And the balance will be parking garage, as was pointed out. It would come in the rear into the parking garage in the building. That's, that's a shame. I just think that's... That's a shame, you know. So those are my three things. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Got it. Any other member of the public who would like to speak for or against? I don't see anybody. Nobody's here. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Can I have the dollar back? <laughs> Uh, David Kennedy, uh, as mentioned, I'm the executive director of the Greater Patchogue Chamber of Commerce, 15 uh, North Ocean Avenue. Uh, I'm also here as a resident uh, of the village of Patchogue at 48 Cedar Avenue. Uh, so still, I'll talk about the chamber first. 
Um, and, and I'll go right in. We just talked about uh, this office space here. Um, you know, the developer has met with the chamber and has offered us uh, this office space, which we're considering. There's nothing uh, signed on the dotted line or a, a hard commitment there. Uh, and so to point, and just to make it clear, um, you know, the chamber's position on this has nothing to do uh, with this potential uh, new office space. And as a matter of fact, we've made it publicly clear in, in previous meetings uh, that if the community had said, because I think the most important part of what this space is being discussed as is that uh, they were presented uh, by the village with this edict that if you really want to see this project move forward, we want you to at least try to preserve some of the nature of the history of the area. And the developers said, OK, we'll do that. We didn't really have a need for that space, but maybe we can give it back to the community. And we suggested the Chamber of, of Commerce would be the prop or would be a good use. Mm -hmm. uh, but if the community said, look, this is great community space for other organizations, uh, the Chamber certainly would not stand in the way if it was the Arts Council or the Historical Society or another organization where that space uh, could be, be better used for. Uh, and, and we would certainly not stand in the way of that. Uh, and, and again, speaking to uh, the, the history of that, most people weren't even aware of the of the historic nature of that building. Uh, you know, when, when it's come up, it's actually this project has made people aware that there was this little historic building there. Uh, and then so the historic significance is a very local nature. And that's why you don't see it on a historic register. It's not a, a significantly historic building other than it's really the last remaining building that stands that connects to what everybody remembers as the lace mill property, as that was a carriage house originally for the lace mill and then became uh, a trolley house for when we had uh, a trolleys coming down the street. So I think what the mayor was hoping for is that at least there is something that this project will have that will still speak to the history of what was there. Uh, and that was always the intention, I, I think, of, of, of what's happened there. Now, again, you know, the Chamber of Commerce, we're a 500-member organization. I got 20 members on my board of directors. So saying that the Chamber of Commerce has officially endorsed this project right now, I can't say that we have. I can say that they have come to the board of directors and, and it's been uh, received very favorably uh, by what they're, they're offering to do. Part of the reason we haven't made official endorsement is because we want to hear how the process works and, and what some of the things that were coming out of the process and, and following the process, because my edict is really to report to the board of what's being discussed, what has impressed me the most is how, uh, as we've gone through this process, how the developers have heard from the residents and, and each presentation have begun to really seriously answer those questions uh, about it. Uh, to me, the most serious question is the parking, because when people talk about Patchogue, that's the first thing everybody talks about is the lack and the need of parking. Uh, but I think it should be, as has been uh, emphasized, is that uh, the demand of parking created that need in Patchogue has really been the commercial development and not the residential development. As a matter of fact, uh, for planning, uh, a, a national planning association was hired by this village back in, I believe, 2016 that did a study that showed that the parking demand created by the new residential structures has been minimal. And it's really been the restaurant uh, where you see the most rise in, in, in parking. And of course, it makes sense. Uh, we did a study. There's about 2,000 parking spaces in Patchogue. And on a Friday, Saturday night, 500 of those spots are deemed uh, being taken, occupied by employees, mm -hmm. and mainly from the restaurants, because when you think about, you know, back in the day when Patchogue was a retail uh, town, a retail village, most retail establishments had one, two employees, and maybe the people that are patronizing that establishment are in there 30 minutes, 40 minutes tops, so that the man in parking. Now, a restaurant whole new uh, animal there and that each restaurant's probably got 15 or plus employees and that people that occupy or visiting restaurants are there for two hours, uh, maybe longer, uh, creating that large demand on parking. So if, you know, really we as a chamber are trying to work on what we can do to improve employee parking, maybe find places that are outside the perimeter of the village and it'll free up some of the spots in town. And of course, you know, Someday a parking garage is needed in this community. That's not for here to discuss, but I uh, hope that would make a significant impact if the funding uh, could be to associate. But, and of course, any project is going to have its pluses and minuses. Uh, but the things that really excite us 
uh, as a chamber of commerce is that despite, you know, uh, in lieu of the fact that certainly everybody recognizes the downtown of Patchogue has significantly grown uh, and has significantly been proved, um, you know, retailers will tell you a different story. Retailers will tell you that they're still lacking the foot traffic. They still need a little bit more foot traffic. So a couple of things where most people today would tell you a mixed use type of development is better because, you know, and that's usually been the way to go. And Patchog has been very successful. New Village uh, is the, uh, the cornerstone of that. Uh, but in this case, our retailers are telling us they don't want more retail because they'd like to see more foot traffic support the retail that certainly exists. And this project does that minus the 300 square foot cafe that they're talking about. Uh, so they're looking to bring in some more uh, uh, foot traffic and certainly adding more commercial space as we've seen over the last 15 years, nine times out of 10, that commercial space becomes another, uh, becomes a restaurant. And I think we can all agree plenty of restaurants. Uh, we don't need to add to that, uh, especially considering that a new restaurant is really what does impact the parking uh, more than any other type of establishment. Uh, but now speaking as a resident, what really excites me the most is uh, my, as a resident, I've been a former village trustee and, and uh, I've served on some boards really around uh, the Patchogue River and the, the uh, uh, redevelopment of the Patchogue River to a vista. Uh, and one thing that always amazes me as a chamber person going other and visiting other chambers. And I talk about the waterfront in Patchogue. A lot of people don't even realize how close the waterfront is to our uh, downtown. And the fact that the river actually runs through and intersects uh, with our main street. So the fact that they're coming in and gonna open up this vista and, and really open up the eyes of visitors of how close our waterfront is, We've always talked about a river walk that potentially might be able to create some kind of way that you're on Main Street and can easily get down uh, south to the waterfront. Because when you really think about it, the Harbor Crab to Main Street on that line, if there was a walk there, would be about a two to three minute walk. Uh, and it would really kind of transform how people view uh, our community and also bridge the gap. Because um, as a chamber, I can tell you, there's still a little conflict between the riverfront businesses and the Main Street businesses and who gets more attention and uh, where is more of the attention uh, focused on. So the fact that we could connect that, uh, again, would be transformative and really linking what's happening on Main Street to what we would like to see on the waterfront and vice versa. Uh, so, and, you know, it, it also, obviously, it takes a very blighted section of our downtown, uh, an area that really could use redevelopment and connect to what's been happening uh, in the heart of the downtown over the last 20 years and make it a much more attractive and make that entrance way. Because let's figure, I think we all see now, Waverly Avenue is the gateway to our community right now. Maybe I was growing up North Ocean Avenue or Route 112 would be the more preferred ways to come into town. Uh, that has completely changed and it is Waverly Avenue. Uh, so certainly aesthetically making it look more pleasing uh, and attractive uh, as a vibrant community. Again, this project uh, uh, provides that as well. So uh, I think you guys are all asking the great questions. You've obviously identified the parking relief is the biggest hurdle that you guys are facing. Uh, but one thing I get to put out there is that, uh, at least based on what I'm hearing today, is that the calculations of parking provided by New Village is less than the parking calculations that they're going to provide. And you can, are, are, you know, obviously New Village, not only the residential, with the commercial space, their demand that they brought to our community for parking is a lot larger than the demand that they're asking for, but yet they were able to succeed and build uh, with a lot less of a uh, percentage of parking uh, than they're offering there. And I know they get around that because the village was very generous in creating their own zoning code to allow that project to exist. And that's how they were able to circumvent that. They're not asking to go as drastic as that. Uh, to, to asking for a new zoning code to create the project, uh, but uh, they have made a very good argument that the parking they're going to provide is uh, should be more than enough there. So uh, that's basically all my comments, and I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of the public who would like to speak for or against this out? Good evening, how are you doing, ladies and gentlemen of the board? Uh, I'm Frank Densing, I'm the chief of the Patchogue Fire Department. Uh, I'm not here for or against it. I just got two things. One thing is uh, the department would like to see plans 
from the beginning to the end in every stage you go through so I can do my pre-planning because this puts another another big building in my district. So what I was about to say, yeah. I didn't know you were coming, was that we've already been in contact with your chief, uh, Zumbro. Yeah, Z. Yeah, Z's my assistant chief. I'm the chief of the department. I apologize. Okay. I was told he was the chief by... He's one, my of my, yeah, he's one of my assistant chief. And we've already called him and okay. requested a meeting to by the applicant with the designers to come. Very good. We went through with him. Okay. We already had a meeting with the chief building inspector, Mr. Sarich, okay. and his two building inspectors. And he gave us the entire list of what the Patchogue Fire Department would like to see. And it was reviewed with him. And he said, when you come to our meeting, all of those things, if you're going to okay. address We would like to review because he, we speak on the pay of the fire department. We, we asked him for a meeting date. And okay. we're waiting for him to get I back. I can give you a meeting date as soon as I leave here tonight. We can be. Well, then you just share it. And okay. I'll let you see you. And the second thing is, uh, I know you have 410 parking spaces. Out of that, how many are going to be for charging electric costs? That was also reviewed. Mr. Rockowitz brought it up. And I don't think it's been finalized okay. yet. So it's being discussed as part of the planning board, but the planning board defer all of that to the next meeting if we're lucky enough to get approval from the zoning. Okay. I, the, to me, it's free plan. <laughs> with the electric not so. a problem. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Any other member of the public? No, so, Mr. Russo. Any other Mr. Questions? Chairman, members of the board, I want to thank you again for your time this evening. And in summary, it is my opinion on behalf of the applicant and our consultants that we've addressed all of the requirements under 7-712B of the variance relief sought by the applicant as it relates to this project and your code. And we believe that it's the approval if granted. What we're proposing is the minimum necessary and adequate to move forward with the application, at the same time, preserve and protect the character, health, safety, and welfare of the community. So we ask that you respectively close if, if you have no further questions and allow for the decision-making process to ensue promptly so that we can move forward with any other board we have to deal with, which at this point is namely the Architectural Review Board and the Planning Board. Gotcha. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The next meeting, if I'm correct, would be the 16th 16. of April. No, and no, 16th of April. No, 16th. Uh -huh. Yes. 16th of April. 14 days from today is the second. Yeah. We're already <laughs> just pointing that out. Mr. Chairman, I move we adjourn the application to our April 16th meeting. Votes available to expire to adjourn the application to the 16th. Section 5, call uh, All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No, so okay. Thank well, you, Mr. Mayor. Very you won't need everybody. It's just that we're, when you come back on the 16th. I look forward to being with you again. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to be authorized. I, <laughs> you've just made my applicant very happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, uh, want to thank everybody for their time tonight. Thank you for your comments. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move the uh, don't have a decision. We don't have a decision. We don't have a decision. Oh, we don't have a decision. Mr. Chairman, I move. Go ahead. We'll take a motion on the next meeting. Second time. Motion made by Mr. Stein to close the meeting. Second by Mr. Russo. Second by Mr. Russo.